Hi everyone, in this video I will talk about long term depression. Now if we break the term, long term means long lasting and depression means weakening. So for long lasting synaptic weakening could be termed as long term depression. Here is our brain which is formed of billions of neurons and they are connected to each other by junctions known as synapses. Now upon experience or learning related tasks, the strength and transmission efficiency of these synapses could change, either increase or decrease. Any decrease in synaptic transmission efficiency and strength, which is long lasting, is known as long term depression. Now, long term depression could be evoked by some protocol. In a cultured slice system, people can people can excite the presynaptic terminal and they are able to record from the postsynaptic terminal. In this situation, if they give a presynaptic current injection, they are going to get a postsynaptic potential known as EPSP. Now people scientists have applied a protocol which is a stimulation protocol in, in, in which they give a hundred, a 10 hertz low frequency stimulation for about 10 minutes and then they again give the same amount of current injection. After the current injection what they have noticed is the amplitude of the postsynaptic potential decreased. That means the strength of the synapses has been decreased right now. Another way of showing this data is to plot the calculate the slope and plot the slope over time and if it is lower than the baseline that suggests the synaptic strength has been altered. Now what exactly happens when 100 when 10 hertz for 10 minutes low frequency stimulus is given? The low frequency stimulus can raise the calcium level in the postsynaptic region from 100 nanomolar to 400 nanomolar. Unlike LTP this is quite low because in case of LTP the postsynaptic calcium elevation is tenfold. It rises about one micromolar. So this kind of cal fourfold calcium rise can be detected by mechanisms. But before we have to show that LTD is also responsible L for LTD calcium is also responsible and NMD receptor has profound role in LTD because in case of LTD protocol, if you block the NMD receptor by an NMD receptor blocker, the long term depression is gone. Here you can see the, the synaptic the EPSP slopes recorded over time is nearly ba like baseline. After 1 hertz low frequency stimulation, depression didn't take place because NMDA is blocked in this situation. But if the blocker is washed out, then you can see the synaptic strength has uh, has decreased from the baseline that means depression had occurred for LTD concentration of the calcium and also calcium entered via, via NMD receptor is important now also in LTD is highly dependent upon the frequency of stimulation high frequency stimulation can give rise to potentiation whereas low frequency stimulation 1 hertz to 10 hertz frequency stimulation can give rise to LTD. Now, what's so special about frequency of stimulation? Because if the frequency of stimulation is high, potentiation could occur, whereas a total reversible type of change, total opposite kind of change happens when the frequency of stimulation is low. The, the whole concept is in calcium, because low frequency stimulus for a long duration rise the calcium at a level which would activate certain molecular mechanisms which can depress the synaptic strength instead of increasing. Now, and, and that kind of uh, lower level of calcium, calcium rise for a longer time could be detected by molecular mechanisms like calcineurin. Calcineurin can read the calcium signals. Now here you can see that when calcineurin is blocked, the long term depression is gone both the cases either by pharmacological blockade of calcineurin or by 
blockade of calcineurin by a calcineurin inhibitory peptide, the synaptic depression response for recorded over time is gone. That means calcineurin is very important for synaptic depression. Now what just happened? Underlying NMD receptor, calcium is there. But in this calcium, the spatiotemporal dynamics of the calcium has very profound implication whether the synaptic strength would increase or the synaptic strength would decrease. Now a brief high level of calcium would increase the synaptic strength while low level of calcium persisting for a long time would decrease the synaptic strength because low and persisting level of calcium can activate calcineurin which is a protein phosphatase. Now calcineurin indirectly in interfere with the CAMK2 activity and calcineurin also does other stuffs which would allow a depression in the synaptic strength and also a structural change in the synaptic sy synapses. Now here is the synapse. Let's say there are three AMP receptors and one NMD receptor on this particular synapse and you are able to inject a current and going to record response from the post synapse. But then you give a LTD induction protocol which is kind of low frequency stimulation and lasting for 10 to 15 minutes. Now what happens after that when you inject the same amount of current now you are able to record a postsynaptic potential whose amplitude is way lower than the earlier. What, what actually happened? In case of LTP, calcineurin type of proteins, they, they dephosphorylated several molecules. As a result, as an end result, AMPA receptors get internalized in the postsynaptic region. Thereby, the postsynaptic current is decreased, the current amplitude is decreased. It also causes structural change. As a result, the postsynaptic the postsynaptic region, the postsynapse got smaller in size or their size decreased because calcineurin can also interfere with the actin polymerization mechanisms. But the question is what LTD actually does? People claim that LTP like mechanisms could be used by the brain to encode memory while LTD like mechanisms could be used by the neuron in the brain to erase memories. But this kind of view is debated and also very controversial. Recent studies have shown that in, in flies, in drosophila, classical conditioning pairing conditioned and unconditioned stimulus. Here you can see the flies are trained with the odor which is coupled with a shock and also separately trained with the odor which is not coupled with a shock. If they have learned their lesson properly, they would avoid the order which comes with a shock when only the order is presented. Now, this kind of classical conditioning, underlying this kind of classical conditioning, scientists have found that at, set, at, specific, at specific synapses between the fly learning center and the output neuron which goes to the motor center, there is a synaptic depression happening, suggesting synaptic depression could be also a part of this learning processes uh, and a mechanism underlying which memory could be encoded. But still this kind of conclusion, so no conclusions could be drawn from this kind of experiments and, and it's only we can say that this kind of processes are underlying learning and mechanism but exactly whether there is a causal relationship we cannot claim till right now. I hope you like my video. If you like my video give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you.